you. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. This is good. This is exciting. We're filming for Netflix tonight. Thank you. They don't know that yet, but uh, we are filming for Netflix. <laughs> It's good to see you. I appreciate everybody coming in. It's good to see people laughing out in groups again, having a good time. The pandemic's almost over, kind of. We don't really know. They're not gonna tell us. Just gotta kind of figure that shit out on our own. You know, it's a very definitive starting point to the pandemic, though. They give us crystal clear rules, then all we did was just muddy them up and modify it to make our own little version of the pandemic. That's what we, That's why they're not gonna tell us when it's over. Great, because they said, hey, don't leave your house. You're in quarantine, stay locked down. Don't talk to anybody. This is very serious. And we all said, this is serious. Don't leave the house. I'm gonna stay home. I'm not talking to anybody, uh, except my best friend, Randy. I know I can trust Randy. Randy's not gonna give me the virus, so that's it. Just me and Randy, and we're staying. Well, our neighbors have a pool. We gotta make friends with the neighbors. <laughs> but that's it, the pool, and then Randy, and you can't catch the virus in Florida, so we can take a trip to Florida. But outside of <laughs> Florida, the pool, and Randy, that is it. We're taking this thing seriously, and you know, we so made up our own shit anyway. I, and, and I wanna know when the pandemic's gonna be over, because I'm gonna miss it, you know? I, I realized early on in quarantine that I just don't like people all that much. I don't know about the rest of you. I, people were panicking, like, we gotta stay in, we can't talk to anybody, we can't hang out with anybody, what are we gonna do? And I'm at home beating off to the idea of it. It's a you know, dream come true. You know, for, for years, we're gonna hear tales of woe about everything that the pandemic took from us. And it did. It took a lot from us. But what about all the shit that the pandemic gave to us? You know, the pandemic solved a lot of shit. When are we gonna hear about that? Your annoying neighbor? No longer a problem during the pandemic. <laughs> Remember before the pandemic, you'd step outside to check your mailbox, the neighbor came outside at the same time, you're like, oh no, they're gonna wanna talk and you don't wanna talk to him and you know, he doesn't wanna talk to you, so you both start walking slower towards the mailbox, <laughs> hoping the other guy picks it up, you wind up in the middle of the street having the same conversation for 10 years, the same boring horse shit, redundant conversation, and, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Everything's good because nobody gives a fuck about the other person. You know, how's the family? Your oh, family's good. What about the kids? Kids are good. Both of you pray and a car comes by and wipes the both of you out to end this shit cycle you've been in. You know, then the pandemic kid and it, it took care of it all. You came out your front door, your neighbor came out theirs and you wave. You're like, yeah, Lou, I'd love to talk, but we can't, you know, six feet that way or six feet that way. Fuck off. Leave me alone. You know? <laughs> Children's birthday parties? Pandemic solved that. <laughs> Remember how annoying children's birthday parties were before the pandemic? You're having a perfectly good day. You walk out to check the mail. There's some Dr. Seuss themed invites sitting in there. The whole thing rhymes, you know? Our little one is turning two and he'd sure love to see you. And you're like, God damn it. <laughs> There goes another fucking Saturday. <laughs> Four hours trying to dodge the stomach flu in a play port. <laughs> then the pandemic hit and children's birthday parties were a thing of the past. Parents were just sticking signs in their front yard with their kid's name and age on them. And they were like, yeah, drive by on Saturday at 10 in the morning, honk, wave, we'll be outside. And Perfect. Sign me up. My wife and I were getting up early every weekend to go spread birthday cheer to the whole neighborhood. Just lined up in rows of cars in the suburbs like some weird pedophile garage sale. <laughs> Don't tell me these pedophiles weren't licking their chops during the pandemic. Like what? The kid's name and age in the front yard? Are you shitting me? It's Christmas come early, you know? <laughs> Driving around taking notes. Seven-year-old here, four-year-old here. Happy birthday to me. These twins are 13. <laughs> I'm just dropping pins, you know? Yarn thumbtack to a map in their mom's basement.
Grocery shopping? Pandemic solved another one. I hated going grocery shopping before the pandemic. Yeah, because my wife makes the grocery list. And then she gives it to me and I gotta go fucking try and figure all that out when I'm there. You women are so diligent and organized about every little detail in your life that I don't know what the fuck happens when it comes to making a grocery list. Everything's in a fucked up scattered order on it. You know what I mean? A man makes a grocery list in the order that he's gonna go through the store. You know, produce, meat, canned goods, impulse buys, fuck you, I'm out of here in 15 minutes. That's how a man makes a grocery list. Uh, a woman makes a grocery list like she had a stroke in the middle of making it. My wife sends me to the store, here's the list. Strawberries, toilet paper, pears, ground beef, blueberries, candy. What to put all the fucking produce in one spot? I'm not looking to get my 10,000 steps walking laps in this goddamn store in here. And she's like, Vince, just bring a pen and cross them out as you go. Like, who the fuck is bringing a pen to the grocery store? There's 50 items on the list. I come home with three of them. I'm like, here you go. They rot of everything else. <laughs> but then the pandemic hit and it solved the problem for both of us because the grocery store started delivering under the guise of contactless delivery. It was perfect. She could type it in in whatever fucked up order she wants on the computer. And an hour later, bing bong, they drop it and they fucking run. I don't have to talk to anybody. She gets her fix in. Boom, boom. It's a win-win. It's a happy marriage for both of us. If you want contactless delivery events? Yeah, select all. Contactless everything in my life. Yeah. Yeah, what if we don't have the item you ordered? I don't care. Put something else in its place, okay? Uh, I will gladly eat the off-brand if I don't have to look at or talk to anybody again for the rest of my life, you know? And we all got a lesson in germs because we all freaked out and started washing down our groceries with fucking soap and water. Just sitting there scrubbing down macaroni and cheese with bleach, you know? You're ordering macaroni and cheese. How concerned about your health really were you to begin with? The bleach is probably the healthiest fucking thing in that box. You know? We're putting all of our groceries outside for two hours to let all the germs dissipate, you know? And then you leave your house and take 17 walks a day in your neighborhood to breathe in all the grocery germs. What are we doing? Scrubbing everything down. Then you go back to the grocery store after the pandemic and everybody's back in the produce aisle, finger fucking all the fruit again. Did we learn nothing? You were washing your Rice Krispies with a Clorox wipe like two weeks ago. What the fuck are you doing now? Touching this one, tapping that one, jiggling that one. I'm waiting for corn. The lady in front of me is ripping open corn, sniffing it, and then shoving it back in the box. Like, we all want corn too. What are you doing? Hang on. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, what are you looking for? Corn? It's in there. <laughs> Try and make a human connection. You're like, you believe what this lady's doing? This guy doesn't give a shit. He's over here knocking on a watermelon. <laughs> well, what the fuck are you doing now? Well, you could tell if it's dense or not. You know? No, you could tell if you're dense or not. <laughs> or the fact that you're knocking on fruit and Hulk Hoganing it in public. <laughs> What, what, what purpose does that serve? It needs to sound right. The last time it sounded like this, it wasn't good. Yeah. So the last time it wasn't good, take a fucking chance, all right? How many times have you puked drinking Jaeger, and the next time you're like, yeah, maybe tonight's not the night. Go, go up and you slug it down. Take a fucking chance and eat the watermelon, you pussy. <laughs> God, I hate people. I don't want to. I want to be a good guy. I want to be upbeat and optimistic, but every day I talk to somebody and just fucking shatters that dream for me. And every morning I wake up pro-life and I go to bed pro-choice. Every single day of my life. Pandemic wailed my kids too. My son had to wear a mask on the bus ride to school all last year. 
Yeah, he wore a mask on the bus ride to school all last... Didn't have to wear the mask at school, by the way. Just to mentally fuck up his sense of logic and reasoning for the rest of his life. Yeah, when you get around more people, take it off. Oh, okay. But he had to wear it on the bus ride to school, okay? And, and then all the neighborhood kids congregate in my driveway to wait for the bus every single morning. All the neighborhood kids, my driveway, waiting for the bus. A, a neighborhood of 50 houses, I got the Wonka ticket. These kids are in my driveway. <laughs> Every single one, I'm out there with them at 8 in the morning, every single morning. And I don't want to be out there with them at 8 in the morning, every morning. But on the first day of school, I went out there to see my son off on his first bus ride. And all the other neighborhood parents were like, oh, Vince has him. And they just dumped their kids in my driveway. So I'm the schmuck now trying to keep order and keep all these kids safe at 8 in the morning. Listen to them fight about the dumbest shit you've ever heard in your life. You know, I get on the bus first today. No, you got on the bus first yesterday. Today's my day to get on the bus first. I'm going, guys, does it matter who gets on the bus first? You're all getting on this bus. There's not a fucking chance I'm keeping you at the house with me in here today. We're all getting on the bus. Does it matter what order? Yeah, it matters the order, because I want that seat. No, I called that seat yesterday. You got it before. No, that's my seat. I want that seat. I'm going, guys, you're seven years old. What are you, Rosa Parks? Get on the fucking bus. <laughs> then the bus comes by, and they all put their masks on and go to get on the bus. And the one day I grab my son, Nicholas, and I go, Nick, come here and give Dad a kiss. And I pull him in to kiss him, and he goes like this with his head as I'm trying to kiss him. And, I, and I'm like, Nick, what are you doing? You're seven years old. You're not supposed to be embarrassed of your dad. Come here. And I pull him in tighter and he starts to matrix me <laughs> to get away from me. And I look down, it's the neighbor's kid. It's not even my son. I... because they're both wearing blue shoes and a fucking mask, you know? And wrestling with him, and meanwhile, my son's over here going, Dad, what are you doing? Give me a kiss. Like, I can't, I gotta call his dad now before he does. Hey, Lou, it's Vince. Yeah, I did it again. <laughs> yeah. My son went to kindergarten on Zoom. Which means that I went to kindergarten on Zoom. Let's be very clear about what that means. Yeah, there was no him in the equation. He's in the next room stacking Legos. I'm the schmuck sitting in front of the iPad trying to answer all the teacher's questions now. Trying to act like I'm not a piece of shit dad that's lost complete control of the household here. Uh, trying to convince teachers virtually that this is how he learns best. He has ADD. We like to relay it in through a third party and then feed it back out to him in an adjacent room while he plays with other toys. That's his learning style. Meanwhile, I'm, my wife's on my case the entire pandemic. She's like, Vince, you got to get Nicholas in front of the iPad. I'm like, Tiffany, I have tried to get him in front of the iPad. He won't go. And she's like, then you got to make him do it, Vince. You just got to make him do it. You're the man of the house. I'm like, I've been married to you for 10 years, and you haven't accused me of that once. Let's not <laughs> pull that out of our pocket. Man of the house, who the fuck did you marry, you know? And I can't make him do it either, because I don't want DCFS coming over to the house to snatch up our kid. Because let's not forget, this is a video taught lesson, and it's live. These teachers can see and hear everything that's happening on my side of the screen, and they're not stupid. They know that every time I go on mute and shut off the video, that I'm terrorizing my son behind the scenes. They know exactly how it's playing out. Like, Nick, come on over. We're doing math right now. Nick, put the Legos down. We're doing math right now. Nick, you gotta come by. We're doing math. Get the fuck over here. Let's go. Cut the shit and get in the goddamn seat. Nicholas is on his way. He is very excited about today's math lesson. Get over here! Don't look at me, look at the screen. Let's go. 
Here's Nicholas. You're like, well, math makes him sad. And you don't want to yell at your kids like that. Yell, but what other choice do you have? They don't listen. They have an answer for everything. Now, Nick, get in front of the iPad. Yeah, Dad, you said the iPad was bad for my eyes. I'll buy glasses. Get in front of the iPad. You gotta go to school. Dad, I don't like school. Nobody likes school. Your opinion means nothing. You still gotta go and do it. Well, if nobody likes school, why do I gotta go? I, I'll tell you why. Because if you don't go to school for some dumb reason, I go to jail. That's why you gotta go. Yeah. You know how you cry about math? Yeah, that's how daddy cries about getting butt-fucked in prison, okay? I don't want to do it. I don't want to go. So I need you to step it up and focus on the math for the both of us. Let's practice it again. How many times does one go into zero? Yeah, zero times. Get in front of the goddamn iPad. This new math. I have an eight-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter, and they're the greatest thing in my life. I love them more than anything on this planet, and I'm going to bitch about them for 20 minutes, because that's how I can still be a good dad. I can be a bad father on stage, bitch about them. You go home, give them a kiss, we all wind up good, okay? Just never show them the tape. Kids, man, they, you love them, but man, they, they fucking test you. That's how you know you love them. You wouldn't put up with that shit from anybody else. You know? Your spouse pulled the shit that your kids pull with you. Their shit would be on the driveway in half a minute. Your kids, you keep going back for more. My kids always want me to play with them. It's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> and they want you to play, because when you're younger, you, and you, you're, oh, I'm going to be a, an awesome parent, I'm going to do everything that my parents didn't do, and then you get older and you realize why they didn't do it. You know? It <laughs> makes sense. It all checks out. <laughs> my kids trying to get me to play is like me trying to get my wife to have sex. There's always a fucking contradicting <laughs> excuse you can't fucking win. And you, you, Dad, can you play? Like, dude, I just sat down. Dad, I want you to play. I just got up to do something. Dad, Dad will you play? I'm about to eat. Dad, can you play? I just got done eating. What is wrong with you? Doesn't fight, can't fucking win. You ever play hide and seek with your kids and when it's your turn to hide, you leave the house for an hour and a half? You ever do that? We're playing right now. <laughs> It's my turn to hide. Yo, Dad, you're a good hider. Where were you at? Rosemont. <laughs> you know, it's a tough one. Do you play with me? Dad, you don't even, my, my parents never played with me growing up. Did your parents ever play with you growing up? Fuck no. You weren't even allowed to ask your parents to play with you when we were growing up. If you were anywhere near your parents, you were either grounded, you had to go to bed, or there was shit to do around the house. You, you didn't even fucking consider it as an option. It, I, I, they played with you just like you play with your kids when they're two years old or younger. Yeah, when they're at risk of their head snapping off their neck and rolling under the couch. Yeah, you play with the kid for a little bit, all right? But once they have neck stability, prop that little fucker up. Boredom's a part of life. Time to get used to it. Let's go. I... But they keep, Dad, I want you to play with me. It's like, that's why we had a sister for you, okay? That's why, so you two... If we had to be involved, we would have stopped with you. Go play with her, you know? I'm trying to watch TVs in front of me like a dog with a leash for a walk. Dad, I want you to play. I'm like, I, I want to watch this. Day. Dad, come on and play with me. I'm, like, I, I'm trying to watch this documentary on how to be present. Get the fuck out of the TV screen. You know, our parents' generation had it easier. You know, because our parents were born in the 50s and 60s, and that's, that baby boomer generation's a tough fucking, and some of you in here, yeah, the tough fucking generation, that is a badass generation, but you had it easier, because if you were born in the, as a baby boomer, you were born in the 50s, you were born without empathy, and that's an amazing quality 
to lack in life. That is a superhero power that you were gifted that I don't think you truly are aware of. You, you can accomplish a lot in this world when you have no regard for the feelings of others. That is an amazing superhero power. Yeah, I'm going to go to my dad for advice when I was a kid. Dad, this kid's not playing with me. Fuck him. <laughs> Sound advice. You know, I gotta listen to my kid. I gotta hear him out and I gotta validate everything he said so he knows that I was true. Well, that happened to you. Well, hey, I'd feel that way if that happened to me too. Uh, tell me more. Yeah. So much easier to be like, fuck him. You know? It's, But that baby boomer generation's fucking tough. My dad is carved out of fucking stone, man. He's 66 years old and he could still beat the shit out of me. And, and he would. He's not past it either. That's the... He's fucking tough, man. I'm 40 years old. I still get a chill down my spine when he answers the phone, you know? Yeah. I do. Is mom there? <laughs> but he'll call you. He'll call me with the life lesson. Vince, you got to give those kids tough love over there. You're taking care of the house. You got to give them tough love. I know you love them, and I, I, I know I know they're sweet, and you love them, but, but you got to give them tough love now. They'll thank you for it later. You got to give them tough love. And you're like, is it me, or is tough love a 1980s euphemism for beat the shit out of your children? <laughs> You can't do that in 2023. Times have shifted now. It's a whole different world. You can't hit your kids and lie to them like your generation did growing up. You know, this hurts me more than it hurts you, you know? It, you lying sack of shit. Dude, my kid's got an iPad welded into his hands 24 hours a day. If I tried that with him, mid-spank he'd be Googling, does it hurt the parent more when the parent hits the kid? Then when the kid gets hit by the parent. No, you're going to jail, Dad. It turns out this is a felony. That's why if, if you were born in the 50s or 60s, you're good people. You did what you could with the tools you had available to you and the times you were coming up as a parent. But times have changed. You haven't. I don't want to hear dick from you when it comes to parenting advice. Now, okay, you grew up in a different parenting era than I did. You grew up in a Michael Jordan, Detroit Pistons, throwing elbows, basketball brawl. And I grew up in a LeBron James flop like a pussy NBA. These are two entirely different eras. Two entirely different eras. I know LeBron's the all-time scoring leader, which is even more impressive that you can make that many shots on your back. <laughs> you know what I, and I'll rag on my dad and give him a hard time, but he was an amazing father growing up. Still an amazing father, but growing up, he was there for everything in my life. Coached every team, was there for every big moment, was there for advice, all the time. It was fuck him, but it was still advice. It was in there. <laughs> He was there for every moment through and through. But I've got three pictures of me and my dad growing up. That's it. All right? And I'm crying in all three of them. If that gives you any indication of my childhood, you know? I have 47 pictures a day of me and my son doing every activity on the planet. Everything from me waking him up out of bed to walking him to the bus to kissing the neighbor kid to apologizing to the neighbor dad to walking him back home. Every holiday, me, my wife, and kids are all wearing matching pajamas out on the front lawn taking pictures like a fucking dildo for the whole neighborhood to see me posing out there. The, the shit I do to get laid three times a year is fucking pathetic. <laughs> matching pajamas. My dad wouldn't be caught dead wearing matching pajamas. He wouldn't be caught dead wearing pajamas, period. Real men don't wear pajamas. Because either tidy whities in his bedroom or balls out on the couch. And it was your fault for walking in during nap time. jealous of the youth. I am jealous of these kids today. And that's a rare thing for a, 
for a, for a man who's aging to admit, because because older men don't like to admit they're jealous. They disguise it and talk about back in my day like their day was better, and it was only better because you were younger. You, it doesn't matter what, where you grew up. You all have the same story from your grandfather growing up, right? You, you'd ask your grandpa for a ride. He was a ride. Back in my day, we used to walk uphill both ways in the snow, no shoes, no socks. And you hear that story, and you're like, Grandpa, you sound like a fucking moron. Why are you telling that story? Who leaves the house in a snowstorm without shoes or socks? How fucking stupid were you as a kid? Yeah, I know the Weather Channel wasn't on TV yet, but you don't have to be a meteorologist to know that cold snow equals frozen foot, you dumb fucking dick. Put a shoe on. And how was it uphill both ways, might I ask? Did you take a different route home like an asshole? Go the way you came. One of them's bound to be downhill. It sounds like you were the cause of all your own bullshit. I'm jealous of these kids. You know, you know, one thing you can't teach this generation of kids is patience. And as parents, we try. You gotta be patient. No, they don't. Nothing else is cooperating with you. Your technology doesn't have your back on that. Your kid walks around the house screaming shit out like an asshole and the shit listens to him. You know what I mean? Alexa's such a whore. She does anything... Anything that these kids want. It is just, hey Alexa, turn on the TV. Turn off the lights. Start the vacuum. Stop the vacuum. Turn up the TV. The vacuum's too loud. Alexa, tell me a joke. Alexa, what's the weather? Alexa, read me a book. You can't even bullshit your kid anymore because of Alexa. Dad, come upstairs. I'm like, ah, give me like two minutes. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. <laughs> I send my son downstairs to do his math homework. You know how he's doing his math homework? You know how he's doing his math homework. Alexa, what's seven plus four? Alexa, give me five minus three. Alexa, what's two times two? And I'm sitting there going, Nick, what are you doing? You can't ask Alexa for all the basic math answers. You have to learn how to do that math in your head. And he goes, why? It's a brilliant fucking question. I have no clue, because I had to. That's all I could think of. He's right. Why would he ever have to do math in his head ever again? It's Alexa's not going anywhere. They're just going to put a QR code on the side of your homework. You'll scan it. And There's all your answers going. For. Every iPhone has a calculator built into it now. These kids are never going to be without the answers again. I know we had calculators when we were growing up, too, but the technology was too new. All we did was spell boobies on them all day long. Remember that? Like, eight, zero, zero, eight, one, three, five, boobies! <laughs> What's two times two? Boobies! Yeah. And your teacher would come by, take your calculator, you'd flunk your math test, go home, and your dad would give you tough love. <laughs> Kids aren't going to spell boobies on an iPhone calculator in 2023. Because you can't. When you turn the phone over, the screen follows you now, no matter which way you go, which completely ruins the aesthetics of the boobies joke. And what, do you expect a seven-year-old to go sifting through the settings to find portrait lock for an adolescent joke? Grow up. One more thing about my kids, and I'll move on. I got the YouTube kids. Parents out there, you got the kids stuck on YouTube? Just the most mind-numbingly boring bullshit you've ever... I know as a parent you're not going to be overly into the stuff your kids are into, but YouTube's not even close. Yeah, at least with Disney, every third movie they'll throw a dick in the middle of it just to keep the engagement around. But YouTube, it's just other kids playing and your kids watching. My daughter's five years old, she goes on YouTube and watches a lady eat. Sorry, that's the whole video. This fucking lady eats. It's a tight shot of the bridge of a lady's nose to her chin, just shoving color-coordinated Skittles in her mouth. And my daughter's like, I want to do that. I'm like, what, eat? You could fucking eat, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to watch her to do that. Go eat. She's like, I want to see her face. I'm like, we all do. She's so fucking fat from eating all that candy, they can't get the fucking thing any wider than that. It's just grown pelican gullet sticking through there. Don't eat candy. My son goes on YouTube and watches videos of other parents playing with their kids. <laughs> Boy, that'll tug at your heartstrings, huh? 
until he's like, you want to play? And you're like, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, the thing they do the most of is they watch other kids play with toys. And this is the one I can't understand. That's how kids have fun now. They watch videos of other kids having fun playing with toys. And they're, so, they're like, oh, just watching it. So en engulfed in it. I'm like, I bought you the same toy. It's right here. Play, play along with them. No, oh, you're just sitting there. just watching. Three minute video. He doesn't even have the attention span for it. He's watching 10 seconds of that one, 14 seconds of that one, 12 seconds of that one. Just watching these other kids have all the fun playing with toys. And I want to tell them how stupid this is and how ridiculous this looks until I stop and think and go, well, I go on the internet and watch other people fuck. So... <laughs> Side by side, comparatively, I'm not all that much different than him. I mean, I am literally doing the exact same shit. Three minute video, 10 seconds of that one, 12 seconds of that one. I have a wife right here and I'm over here, you know. Just... What I'm trying to say is we all go on the internet and watch other people play with toys. That's my point. Thank God for drugs, right? <laughs> Marijuana is legal in Illinois now. That's good. We got that one in. A little more uppity than the early show was. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm glad marijuana is legal in Illinois. I'm glad you got the right to do it. I don't even smoke pot, okay? I, I can't. I have a lung condition in that I have lungs. So I can't do it. It's not for me. But if you can do it and stay alive, good for you for doing it. I'm glad you got the right to do it. You should have always had the right to do it. I don't understand why it was ever illegal. It's a fucking plant. It goes right out of the fuck. It's a goddamn fucking plant. I'm a firm believer. If you can go to the grocery store and you can buy cumin on the spice rack, you should be able to buy marijuana on the same spice rack. You don't even know what the fuck cumin is. You just know some guy in a white coat told you to eat it. Oh, cumin's good. No, you don't even know what it tastes like. You ever tried cumin on its own? Fuck you. None of you have. You don't know what it tastes like. Maybe that's what the food tasted like to begin with. All you are, you cumin's good for your brain. So is marijuana. Yeah. Well, cumin lowers your inflammation. So does marijuana. Yeah, well, cumin makes your food taste good. So does marijuana. Marijuana makes your food taste so good, I guarantee there won't even be any leftovers at the end of that meal. How about that? You know, by a show of hands, who in here has seen a cumin plant at one point in your life? Sold out show, not a fucking hand in a bunch. Okay. By a show of hands, who found out just now that cumin is a plant? Let's see those hands. I... Yeah, a lot of you. Me too, like two weeks ago. Yeah. All right, by a show of hands, who in here has seen a marijuana plant at one point? In... Oh, the whole fucking room. Doesn't that lend more credibility to my point that I'm trying to make that maybe marijuana should be legal and maybe cumin should be suspect at this point? If I can see it, that's got to help the credibility factor behind it. It's all the stereotypes around it is why they did that. You know, they tell you, pot makes you lazy. Potheads are lazy. And you go, what? Your potheads are, potheads aren't lazy. People are lazy. A lot of them smoke pot. It makes you what you are. It doesn't cure you. If you were a lazy pile of shit before you smoked the joint, rest assured you're going to be a lazy pile of shit after you smoke the joint. It's not Red Bull. It doesn't give you wings, you know. It's... And if you're a highly motivated person and you get high, you're very annoying to the rest of us lazy pieces of shit. Dude, I, I, went to a, I went to an Illinois dispensary to, to check it out and try it when it became legal. Listen to my story of going to a dispensary and you tell me at the end if you think that potheads are, are lazy, okay? I, I decided I'd go check one out because I'm, I'm pretty fucking amped up all the time and I can't live my whole life like this. Maybe I could fucking eat my way into calm a little bit, okay? And so I, so I went to this place called Sunny Side or Sunny Side Up, I don't know whatever it is. Some, some take of this is your brain on drugs. Some play on that. All right, and I, I'm kind of excited, a little bit tepid. So I, I walk up there, and there's a big muscle-bound oaf on the outside of the door. And I walk up to him, and right away he stops me. And he goes, you got a code? And I go, what? And he goes, you got a code? I go, uh, 420. <laughs> and he goes, what? And I go, what? He goes, you need a QR code to get in here. I'm like, oh, that's very different than saying a code. Why don't you say a QR code and clear up this whole mess? 
Huh? And no, I don't have a QR code either. What are you talking about? Why do I, why do I need one of those? He's like, you got to go online and buy it. It gives you a QR code. You come here and pick it up. I'm like, oh, I see the confusion. I don't know what I want. I've never been here before. I want to go in and look. He's like, you can't go in and look. You got to buy it online and pick it up. I'm like, I don't know. I want to see what you have. He's like, you got to do it online. I'm like, then why the fuck do you have a brick and mortar store? Uh, why don't you just ship it to me if I have to order it online? He goes, well, we can't send drugs through the mail. I'm like, you got a fucking answer for everything. So I go back to my car. Sit down in my car, pull up their site. First thing, five milligrams THC, gummy bears. Boom, buy that, get my code. I go back up to him, you know, kind of smiling. I did it, you know, thinking maybe a human connection. Up, He's right back to print, you know. Uh, let me see your QR code and ID. I'm like, ID? You need my ID? You just saw me go to my car and buy it. What, you, you think it's not going to be me? What are you talking about? That? I don't understand. I need your QR code and ID. I'm like, all right, well, hang on, man. Oh, geez, okay. And he looks at my ID and he looks at me. He's like, yep, that's you. And I'm like, eh, you know. And then he lets me in. The first set of glass doors, because there's two of them. I go in the first set of glass doors. There's a guy over here on a computer. I walk up to him. He goes, let me see your QR code and ID. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Why didn't that guy tell me I was going to need it in four feet after I just put all that shit away? When you need my ID? I don't understand. I, 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 I give it to him, and he looks at it. He's like, yeah, that's you. I'm like, yeah, what are the odds? You know, and I go in the next set of glass doors. And there's a red velvet rope situation in there, which is fucking pointless, because only one person's allowed in this goddamn store at a time. But you still have to go through this entire rigmarole process to get up to the front counter. It's fucking humiliating. I'll be up in a five minutes. Just hang on to my shit. Don't sell it, you know? And I get up to the front counter. The girl looks at me and goes, let me see your QR code and ID. And I'm like, motherfucker, how do you think I just stopped past the other two fucking dick? Do they work here? Do any of you work here? What the fuck? this place? What do you think, I pull the old switcheroo between the red ropes and the glass doors, you dumb bitch? Look at my fucking face, it's me! Who's going through all this trouble to steal five milligrams of gummy bears? It's fucking me! Look at me! And she, and she looks at me, she's like, yeah, that's you, you know? She go down to her, she'll retrieve your order. I walk down to her, I give her my QR code and ID, and she's like, I don't need that. I'm like, yeah, fuck you too. And I put it all back in my pocket. She hands me the order, go down to her, she'll stamp your receipt. She stamps my receipt, and you gotta show everybody in reverse order that receipt on the way out. By the time I got to my car, you are so mentally stressed out and exhausted, I ate the entire can of gummy bears right there in the car, punched in another order, and went and did all that shit again. Don't tell me potheads are lazy. Don't tell me. They're highly motivated people. And people still flick them shit. You know, get a job, pothead. Get a job, you lazy pothead. They tried to get a job. You know what you did? You drug tested them. Fuck you. You can't have it both ways. Pick a path, huh? You want them to work or not? Do you really want to work somewhere that doesn't let you smoke pot on your free time? It's the hypocrisy of the whole thing. You get down a quart of Jack Daniels at 3 in the morning and still show up to operate the forklift at 5, but you smoke some shitty tinfoil resin 28 days ago, and you're not qualified to file the files? Go fuck yourself. Let the government pay for them then. You want finance to get a job? I got the perfect job for them. Education system. That's where they belong. Teaching the youth of America. Yeah, because our teachers in this country are so grotesquely underpaid, underappreciated, and underrespected. It is a sacrilege how shitty we treat teachers in this country who have to do bar none the worst fucking job on the planet. What a teacher does for nine months every year is take care of your shitty kids day in and day out for nine months out of the year. And when they finally get three months away from your shitty kids, not only does the rest of the world give them shit for getting three months off, you know how they're rewarded? They get to go home for three months with their own fucking shit. Kids. That's how they're rewarded. You wouldn't hack it as a teacher. Yeah, and I don't know how to pay them anymore because the Illinois lottery system's not working out the way it was supposed to. The lottery's not even paying the winners, much less the fucking teachers' union. So what do you do? Who can you afford to underpay to teach? The potheads. Undercut them. Who better to underpay than a pothead? Who can afford more of a pay cut than the one guy who's going to make more money after school hours than he will during school hours anyway? This guy's already in the parking lot of the high school on a daily basis, voluntarily. 
You know, you know, teach your kids all kinds of life skills, you know, sales skills, recruiting skills, financial skills, marketing skills. It's an entrepreneurial startup kit out of the trunk of his car. Let him in the school and cut him a fucking check for it once in a while. And who would you rather teach your kids than a pothead? Be honest with yourself. Who would you rather teach your kids how to read than the one guy who's got the patience to read the same line over and over and over with the same passion and enthusiasm like the first time he read it because he thinks it's the first time he read it? Who would you rather teach him? Who would you rather teach your kids all the skills? Algebra than the one guy who's already weighing out quarters and eighths out of the trunk of his car to begin with? That is a fractional word problem you would never forget on your next exam. He's looking at the parking lot. I got seven people buying an eighth of weed. People one through four are paying for 65% of the eighth. People five through seven are paying for 35% of the eighth. And I get to smoke it with them because I sold it to them. How much does each person get based on their contribution with me as the X variable? That guy has the fucking answer to that question. Off the top of his head, and you could have sat here all day tomorrow with a TI-83 and all you would have came up with is boobies. <laughs> yeah, that did hurt if you're wondering. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Sacrifice yourself for the art. I had to go to the dentist recently. I hate the dentist, which is not surprising since I hate everything I talk about up here. I don't like any type of customer service anymore. All they do is make you feel like a pile of shit for paying them for stuff. So all they do is talk shit to you the whole fucking time now. Make you feel inferior because they know more about the product than you do. You don't know. <laughs> I had to go to the dentist. They told me I needed a deep cleaning. Did I? I don't know. <laughs> the fuck do I know about dentistry? But I'm afraid my teeth will fall out if I don't, so you got me. <laughs> if you've ever had one before, if you've ever had a deep cleaning, it's, 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 it's like a regular cleaning, but deeper. Okay, it's, not, it's not a whole lot, it's not a lot of gray area in there. It's, a regular cleaning is that little metal hook, they go in, they scrape your gums till they bleed, and they talk shit to you for an hour. A deep cleaning is that same metal hook, but it's on a woman's vibrator bottom, all right? And there's a pull cord, because there's a motor in it, and they go And they just start jackhammering your teeth out by the root under a guise of a deep cleaning, which I suppose is the deepest cleaning there is. Take your teeth out one at a time, polish them like a rock, and then put them back in your fucking gums. Yeah, that's pretty goddamn deep. And if, if you have this procedure coming up and you're feeling queasy about hearing about it, don't, don't worry, it's a pain-free procedure. And they'll tell you that right when you walk in, you're not going to feel any pain from the deep cleaning. And you won't, because before you can start the deep cleaning, they have to give you six shots of no Novocaine in one half of your mouth. Yeah, before you can start the deep cleaning, they have to give you six shots of Novocaine in one half of your mouth. So you won't feel anything from the deep cleaning, provided you don't shit yourself and pass out from these six shots of Novocaine in your salami thin cheek. And they, they don't do it in any sort of civilized way where they punch you with one, wait till it numbs up, and then hit you with the other five. Nope, pure pricks from the start. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. You're crying, but you can't feel the tears coming off your face anymore. Your, your cheek is sliding off your bones. You look like a Salvador Dali clock in a recliner, and they just fucking own you from that point forward. That's all they do is dress you down. They fuck you. They lean you back so you're at their mercy. They put a little bib on you like you're three years old. And they start scraping chunks of roast beef out of your teeth and wiping it on your fucking bib. You don't even remember the last time you had roast beef, but there's a whole fucking Subway sandwich sitting on your chest in the dental chair. Lean your back, she got my mouth stretched open as wide as it could possibly go, shoving shit to the back of my throat. I, I don't know how you ladies do it, I guess is my point. I'll never complain again. I got home, my wife was like, how was it? I'm like, hey, my mouth stretches as wide as it can go. And how do you do that? And she's, she's like, my mouth isn't open that wide. <laughs> I 
And they do. They do the deep cleaning, but they can only do half of your mouth. That's how invasive the procedure is. You have to come back three weeks later to get the other half of your mouth done. And you got to go back. It doesn't matter what you thought about the first half of the procedure. you got to go back and do the other half. You don't want to look like a before and after dental commercial for the rest of your life because you were a pussy and skipped out on the Novocaine. you got to go back. And she's just sitting in there the whole time. Vince, you got to be doing a better job of this when you're at home. And you're going, wait, what? Time out. You have a lot more fucking shit at your disposal than I got at home. Who are you to say that? You've got me in, reclined in a position that can only be described as porn in a yoga studio, all right? Uh, 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 you have stadium lighting on me so bright. I've got goggles on indoors. I, I got a lead vest on with a fucking bib over there. You have a welder's mask on with binoculars and a Hubble telescope coming off of that. You have rubber legs text gloves, another lady typing shit out as you shout it into the ether as fast as she can type it. You have an entire tackle box full of hooks and mirrors and reverse mirrors and, and rope and wire and once every six months you send me home with a little bristly brush and a tiny spool of floss and I gotta do a better job of this on my own? Fuck you. Who are you to talk to somebody like that? That's one hell of an advantage you have. They keep coming, Vince. Have you been flossing every day? Yeah, yeah, I did for the first three days till the shit you gave me ran out. They don't even make something that small retail. How the fuck did you get that? I don't like your attitude. I want to talk to your manager. She's like, hang on, let me get the dentist. You mean you're not the dentist? Who the fuck are you? Well, I'm the hygienist. Okay, well, what does the dentist do? His name's on the building. That's where the check's going. What the fuck does that guy do? That's the guy that shows up after this fucking lady busted her ass doing everything. His job is to walk in for 10 seconds, make some shitty joke. Hey, the teeth are... <laughs> you know, and... <laughs> she... She gives him the entire play-by-play -play of everything that's happening. He's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he reaches in the box and he grabs a tool. It doesn't matter which one, because it's all for show. And he sticks it into some gap in your tooth and he starts to wrestle with it until it contracts and goes, ping! And, and, and then he spits out a bunch of vocabulary that's beyond your pay level and understanding and it forces you to pay for your teeth on a credit card for the next five years. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we got an ecclesiastic acoustal on the lower mandibular bicuspid, number 11. He, Fuck you, it's a cavity in a molar. Say it so I can understand it too. In what world? In what world is that vernacular relevant? Number 11. Number 11, you fucking prick. There's a hole in the tooth, second one from the back. How hard is that to say? Well, Vince, you know, we got to get you back in here to fill it. You're like, get me back in here. I'm here. You're here. <laughs> Fill it. My mouth is already numb, fuckface. Fill it. <laughs> Convince my insurance to pay for Novocaine twice? Well, Vince, I got other people to see. I've seen how long it takes you to make your rounds. I got 90 seconds. Go. <laughs> yeah, come back eight weeks later because he's on vacation for the next seven Thursdays. <laughs> Make the first appointment of the day, 7 a.m. How could this go wrong? I don't know, 7.23, I'm still sitting in a chair next to a fish tank with a tropical fish that I know is not indigenous to the area that I help pay for with my teeth. <laughs> Just fucking taking it out on him. 7.27, she comes out the door. Vince, you ready? Like, I've been the fucking hold up this whole time. <laughs> Going there with an attitude already, you know? Sit down, here comes fucking Mr. Rapport. Hey, Vince, huh? you been taking care of your teeth? I got, no, I figured I had a hole in one. Fuck the rest of them. Let's see how good you are at your job. <laughs> well, we got to fill it. What are we going to use today? The silver filling or the white filling? You go, what? My teeth are white. I'll pick the white. Who the fuck is picking the silver now? 
Why is that even still an option? Well, the white one costs more. I know the white one costs more. That's how you fuck over the general public. It's called price anchoring. You make two products. One of them sucks ass. Nobody wants it, but everybody can afford it. The other one's amazing. Everybody wants it, and nobody can afford it. And you use fear-based sales tactics to shove us into fucking dental debt. You go, ah, oh, so what's it going to look like in here today, Vince? Are you going to spend some money and walk out looking like you did on the way in, or you want to use Photoshop every time you open mouth laugh in a picture going forward? What's it going to be? I only ask because I care, you know, do you want to look like you do and spend some money with those pearly whites or you want to walk around looking like Flava Flav for the rest of your life? It's up to you. If you ask my opinion, I say get the white one. I should know I'm a DDS. Yeah, you are. It stands for double dick sticking. I'm getting it from both ends of the cavity right now. In closing, <laughs> I had a gay experience in Vegas back in 2008. <laughs> this is the right crowd to hear about that. <laughs> they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but... This needs to be told. <laughs> You've all had a story like this too? Cool, here's mine. In May of 2008, I was staying at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. I was 25 years old. It's high on life, doing good for myself. People told me, hey, Caesars Palace has an amazing spa called the Qua Spa and Baths. You should check it out. It's an amazing spa. Go down and get a massage. It'll be the best massage you've ever had in your life. And I never had a massage before. So I'm like, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should treat myself for once in my life. So I did. I went and I paid 400 bucks and I got a Las Vegas massage, like a legitimate Las Vegas massage, not some back alley Craigslist rub and tug, you know, where they lay plastic on the mattress in case you bleed from the ass. No, this was like a legitimate, paid for, school certified, therapeutic masseuse massage and, and it was amazing it was everything everybody said and, they, and they, I felt like a million bucks afterwards and they let you back out into the male spa section afterwards and they tell you you can enjoy the rest of the amenities of the spa for the rest of the day because you paid for it already and they let me in there and I've never been into a spa before those of you that have you know you you walk in the ambiance is amazing everything was candle lit the, the whole place smelled like lavender and koala cum it was amazing and just just like you know they call it eucalyptus, but we know where it stems from, right? It's, you breathe it deep, it's good for the lungs, you know? And, and I look in there, and there's a hot tub right in the middle of the spa, and I want to go into that hot tub, but I got to go in naked, because I only have a robe on, I don't have a swimsuit, that's the rule, and I'm going to do it. I look around, there's nobody else in the spa but me, so I'm going to do this hot tub naked, which is contingent on there being nobody else in the spa but me, okay? I, I don't think I'm like the world's smallest guy, but I also don't have that, you know, big dick bravado where I just walk into a room swinging lumber either, okay? I'm a, I'm a little bit more shy and dainty about it, so... It, I take off my robe and I lay it down and I walk over to the hot tub and I put my toes in the hot tub because I'm a pussy. And immediately I'm like, it is way too fucking hot. This is boiling goddamn water. I don't know how the fuck you ladies could possibly find this therapeutic and relaxing melting in lava in here. There, there should be a colander of noodles in this thing, not fucking human bone and flesh. But I paid for the experience, so I'm trying to work my way in. I'm like down to the knee, and all of a sudden I hear. <laughs> the door opens up, and in walks this big, strapping, good looking guy, just square jaw. He's chiseled. You could see the cut of his chest in his robe that's barely holding itself together because of his muscles, you know? And, and he walks in and he stands there and he grabs his robe and he goes and he rips it off like a magician doing a cape twirl. And he's just there. And this guy this fucking guy had the biggest dick I have ever seen on a white guy.
in person in my life. And like a moth to a flame, it took me to it immediately. I don't know if you've ever been starstruck before, but you get that <laughs> with like a magnetron reluctantly pulling my head down. I found myself eye level with this fucking thing. Just staring at it in awe, like my kids on YouTube, you know? It's... Holy shit. That's a beautiful dick. Look at that fucking, fucking gorgeous. It's... it's like Ripley's Believe It or Not. And... I believe it. I am all in. It's perfectly symmetrical in proportion. The balls are hanging at the exact same angle, which never happens. It's like staged furniture at an open house. And I'm ready to make an offer. And when you stare at a dick that long, you forget the fact that it's attached to the body of somebody with eyes. And their eyes are staring at you, staring at their dick. And so he goes, <clears throat> kind of like snapped me out of the haze. And I made my way back up to him. And we locked eyes with each other. And we didn't say a word, but we spoke volumes to each other. And this guy looked at me, he looked at his dick, he looked back at me and he gave me a little half smile and a head tilt because he's gay and he thinks that we're playing. And how could he not think we're playing? I've given him no other indication in here. I haven't even said hi to the guy. I've been sausage sniffing for five minutes over here. So this guy goes to get into the hot tub. So like a power move, he walks over to the hot tub and he sits, not in the hot tub, he sits on the top stair of the hot tub with his legs apart from each other and his dick just timber, sploosh, right into the water. Just swooning around the water. Because he likes his martinis stirred, not shaken, apparently. And now I've been over here with all the awkwardness hitting in hard. I'm like, like, oh, I'm trying to tuck it in silence of the lambs hit back here. Like, I'm trying to like shimmy my way out over to my robe. It's too far away and I don't know what to do to end the waist down embarrassment. So I did the dumbest thing I could possibly do and I dove straight into the hot tub. Yeah, because it's the quickest way to get this out of sight. Hide it in plain sight, get it underwater. I went right into the hot tub, but it was a plunge hot tub, and I didn't know that. So I went bloop, bloop. I went all the way under the water. My head went under the water in a male hot tub, and you never want your head to go under the water in a male hot tub. It's disgusting. It's full of dick, dirt, and ass hair. Like you're bobbing in a ball disc, you know? And And I pop back up out of that water in slow motion like fast times at Ridgemont High. Just on a platter for this guy. If I had an apple in my mouth, he'd have fucked me like a pig right there. There's not a doubt in my mind. But I've got another problem. This water's way too fucking hot still. And now I've dumped everything into it. I gotta get the fuck out, but I didn't go in the hot tub on the side with stairs. He was sitting on the stairs with his dick going down him like a red carpet, welcoming everybody in to the hot tub. I had to jump off the ledge to get in, which means I'm gonna have to jump to get back out, and I don't know which way to jump without sending up another bat signal telling this guy I wanna fuck him. What do you do if you're me? Huh? Do, you, do you face him and I just thrust my little flaccid, mushy baby dick in his face and just tease him with the smallest pecker he's ever seen in his life? Yeah, come here, I'll fuck your nostril. Come here, let's do it. You, know, you gotta get closer than that. Come on, let's go. Or do you risk going out backwards? and just showing him the lunch on the way out. <laughs> Choose your own ending, what do you do? Ultimately what I decided on is I just kind of slithered up onto my belly and I spatchcocked my way across the room <laughs> like a Thanksgiving turkey. 
until I got to my rope and I grabbed my rope and he's like, hey, 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 and I got the fuck out of there. I went and I took a shower. And I wish the story ended there. The third act takes place in the shower. There I am in the shower trying to scrub off shame and wonderment. And all of a sudden I see this silhouette appear in front of the shower door. And it's this guy. There is no fucking mistaking that shadow. This one, can you see this? It's either this guy or some guy is riding a baby elephant in front of my shower door. And either way, I'm not coming out. But here he comes, you know, and I'm like, I'm in here, which of course he knows, that's why he's trying to get in. He jiggles the handle, I'm like, I'm taking a shower, and inside I'm having a panic attack. I'm like, fuck me, which is also what he's thinking, on the other side of the door. So we're aligned in thought. I'm in the shower, fuck, I'm baffled. I'm, I start going through Stockholm Syndrome, you know, where you start trying to figure out a way to cope with it, then work around it, you know? My, my mind started spiraling. I'm like, this guy was so confident that I was gay without me ever vocally confirming that with him that maybe he's right, maybe I am gay. Maybe he's onto something. Maybe I like men and I've been wrong my entire life. I mean, let's look at the facts of the case. I, I did stare at his dick for an awfully long time without saying anything. And then when he put it in the water, it's not like I left. No, I dove head first into the water. Like he was fly fishing me in with his dick. Maybe I'm gay and I've had it wrong my whole life. But then the more I start thinking of that, the more the logical part of my brain kicks back in. Goes, yeah, but even if I am gay and I can wrap my head around this lifestyle, that is not the guy I want to be starting with. Let's work my way up in the equation a little bit in here. You know, that is a square peg, round hole situation. If I've ever seen it before in my life, I'm looking at his dick and my ass like the chief of police on the boat in Jaws, looking at the shark for the first time, like, we're going to need a bigger boat. What the fuck are we doing out here? Call the Coast Guard, bring this around. We're going to need a few more men. Let's go. You know, I, I don't know a lot about baseball, but I know I'm going to be the catcher in here today. And... I'm pretty sure you don't go right into the game with a brand new glove. No, what do you do? You oil it down and you tape a ball into it in the off season, right? You, you build a pocket and let it collapse a little bit in there. Even when you pierce your ears, you use studs before you gauge them, for fuck's sake. I sat in that shower for 85 minutes. until I was sure he was gone. And I walked out of there without the answers I was so desperately seeking in my life. But it was too late. The damage was done. That was 15 years ago, and I still think about that guy from time to time. Little things just remind me of him. Every time I use a hot tub. Every time I need two hands to hold something. time my wife and I are having sex and she's trying to be nice and she's like you're so big I'm like <laughs> I've seen bigger I have been to the mountaintop so I'll leave you on this tonight what happens in Vegas may stay in Vegas but a big dick will haunt you for the rest of your life thank you so much <laughs>